Okay, so the first thing I want to show you how to do is just a plain old straight stitch. Um, but one of the nice things about the machine, this machine, and a lot of the Vikings, most of the Vikings, uh, it has this wonderful uh, help that they provide for you. There's a set of buttons down here um, that have a letter A, B, C, D, E, F, and G next to them on one side, and then another set of buttons here that have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The letters indicate, the buttons next to the letters indicate the type of fabric that you're working with. So I'm going to be sewing on some twill or uh, chino, some people, a couple of different names for that. Um, this is considered a woven medium fabric. Uh, and so the first three buttons here where the icons have look like they've got threads going over and around each other. These are all for different woven materials. The first one, A, is for a lightweight woven. The second one, B, is for a medium weight woven. And C would be for a heavyweight woven like denim. Um, the next three buttons are for stretch materials. These are things that are knitted, not materials that are knitted, not woven. Uh, so they've got a lot more stretch to them. So for something like this, this we'll talk about this in a little while. We'll sew on this soon. This would be a lightweight stretch material, and you can see how much more stretch there is in it than in a woven fabric. Okay, so, and then the very last one down here, letter G, is for sewing on leather and vinyl, which you can, can do with this machine uh, and do very nicely. Then on the right, the, num the icons with the letters or the numbers next to them, these are different sewing techniques. The first one is a straight stitch, um, and then we'll go through some, some of the others soon. Um, so I'm going to select letter B for my woven medium, and I'm going to go B and stitch one. What that's going to do is it's going to set the tension for me. Um, it's going to set the, uh, the stitch length. The machine will tell me what foot to use, so I need to use the A foot. I'm going to pop this foot off so we can take a look at it. Um, this is the A foot, and you can tell that because there's a letter right here. It's embossed in silver, so you, uh, it doesn't stand out real well, but if you angle it just right, you can see that that is an A. Um, the A foot is smooth on the back, and it's recommended for use with lightweight wovens and medium weight wovens um, because it just helps move that fabric smoothly over the uh, feed dogs here. Okay, so it's telling us what foot to use. 101 stands for menu one, stitch one. So stitches one through seven are down here. Um, and then it continues on with the rest of the stitches up here, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, you can also select st stitches here, the same techniques here, plus there's a button, a couple of extra ones that aren't down here. Um, okay, the other thing that the machine shows you when you choose, when you choose your fabric and select your technique is it will tell you what size needle you need to sew that kind of uh, material and that kind of stitch, which is really nice for some of us who um, used to, at least I used to be kind of scared about how to uh, select a needle. Um, it, the Viking really gives you a lot of help. This is uh, your tension setting, which you can change if you need to. Um, this is your stitch length right here. This little, uh, four or five um, bars right here that kind of look like your cell phone, uh, uh, the bars on your cell phone for the strength of your signal. This shows your, indicates your speed, so you can reduce and increase the speed on the machine, the basic speed on the machine, and those buttons are right here. This spot on the screen indicates the presser foot pressure. Now this, the machine doesn't set for you automatically, but it tells you what setting to, to set it at. And on the side of the machine, there's a button here. And that setting for woven medium is on N. 
but for different types of fabric, we'll be moving, moving it to a different spot. So you don't have to know where to set it. The machine will tell you where to set it. Uh, it the sewing machine here indicates that we are in sewing mode. And B1 is the type of fabric that we chose and the technique here. So it's very useful. I guess this is a good time to show you how to put a needle in. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to un I'm going to loosen this, put the foot down, and there's a little screw right up here um, that holds your needle in. And this is an optional um, product, but I would r highly recommend you get one of these when you get your machine or go back in and get one if you didn't get one with it. Uh, I'm going to put my needle so that the uh, flat back is towards the back of this multi-purpose tool. It's even kind of got a flat area there that helps you get it in right. So I'm going to put my needle in there and this makes it a lot easier to get our hands in to this area right here. I'm going to hold that up so it holds it up nice and tightly and then I'm going to take the screwdriver that came with the machine and turn this screw and try to get it in there a little tighter. It's a good thing we hadn't started sewing. But those things happen sometimes. Okay, I think maybe it's in there securely now. Um, so see, things don't always go smoothly for even those of us who've been doing this a lot. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to make sure my needle's in the right position. I'm going to press the down. This, is, this button right here allows you to set uh, the needle down position or the needle up position. And what that means is um, when I choose it, if I set it in the needle down position, the machine will stop with the needle down. And if I have it in the needle up position, it will stop with the needle up. I just use that to try to get my needle in the correct place to thread the machine again. So I've got it all wrapped in there, wrapped around the needle. And I'm going to let go, let the loop form on the back, pull it through, get my tweezers out if I need to, but I think I'm okay. Got a lot of thread there, but that's okay. Now I'm going to lift my foot, take the thread through the foot and to the back, and let's try sewing again. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put the foot down. And remember, we don't have to pull the thread up, uh, the bobbin thread up, by turning the hand wheel. We can just start sewing on this machine. The other nice thing about a drop-in bobbin is for those of you who quilt, you can actually start sewing off the edge of the fabric and sew onto the edge of the fabric without causing a, a big knot underneath. Now one of the nice things about the Jade 35 uh, that comes on the Jade 35 that's not on the Jade 20 is the scissors. So I can actually push the scissor button when I'm done sewing. It will cut to both the top and the bottom thread for me. And the, I find that to be such a time saver and it doesn't give me a whole wad of thread to get caught up underneath like that. So um, there is a really nice uh, stitch. It looks like it's doing well. If you do want to avoid this, by the way, you can pull your bobbin thread up um, before you start and pull it to the back as well, and that will help, help prevent getting a knot underneath. Most of the time, I don't care because nobody's going to see that, but uh, I know some people that uh, really bothers them. So if you don't like that, go ahead and pull your bobbin thread up. So when you have a straight stitch selected like we do right now, these buttons, this indicates that the 0, .0 position, position is the center. If you use the plus and minus buttons, you can see that that starts to change. And if you look at the needle itself, you can see that it's gradually moving that needle position over. And then as I go back to the left, it will um, turn back. This will be in, highlighted in black when it's not in the default position. And as I keep going and get back to 0, 0.0, it will go back to that's the default position. And that's shown by not having that back black ground, black background. <laughs> and then to go the other direction, I just keep pushing the minus needle and that will move the needle over to the left. So I'm going to start out in the center 
And you have quite a few needle positions here, which I think is amazing. So we're going to sew right in this from the center position again. Now, with the, you want to make sure this you stop with the needle up for this. And I'm going to move my needle over to the left to about one point or to about minus two. And I'm going to sew a little bit more. And then I'm going to move my needle back over. I'm going to go the same distance over to plus two on this side, but I can go even further. It won't let you go any further than is safe to sew, which is nice. So we're going to go to 2.0 on this side and stitch some more. And then I'm going to go back to the default position in the center and sew a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to use my scissors to cut my thread. And you can see now how without moving the fabric, I was able to move the needle over so that it will stitch where I want it to stitch. So that's a really uh, nice feature of this machine.